Five seconds on the clock. He jukes left. Fade away. He scored! Yeah! Let's go, Tigers! We won! No, I won! I think in an imaginary game, we all can win. <laughs> yeah, I won MVC of the game. Most valuable cheerleader. <laughs> I just gotta work on my free throws. Dribble up? Yeah, just do that. Well, we all have days where the crowd goes wild, and then days where it seems like we can't sink the basket. In fact, that reminds me of a story about Jesus. Looks like something Grandpa would wear. A fishing head. Liam, you do the honors. See if you can figure out where a fisherman fits in our story. Let's start at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Jesus was baptized and then went into the wilderness. Any idea how long he spent in the wilderness? Three days. Nope. Five days. Uh, not close. A week. No, wait, two weeks. Not even close. Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days. That's five and a half weeks. Imagine being alone for so long. It might feel like Jesus didn't need anyone really to follow him because he could do it all on his own. But God's big story shows us that God invites us to be involved in what he's doing in the world. After being in the wilderness, Jesus went out to heal people and teach to share his message. One of the places he went to share his message was near the Sea of Galilee. While he was teaching, a lot of people showed up, and then more, and then more, and pretty soon, everything was so crowded that Jesus didn't even have room to stand on the shore. He found a boat and asked the owner if he could stand near, as if it was his stage. When Jesus was done teaching, he turned to the boat owner, Simon. Jesus said, let down the nets so you can catch some fish. Simon replied to Jesus, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. Simon thought it was a waste of time to put his nets in the water, but he decided to try anyway. That's when something amazing happened. The net went into the water and right away it was full of a ton of fish. There were so many fish that the net was starting to break. He called to his friends, James and John, who were in a boat nearby, and they came to help him. Simon was so happy and excited that Jesus had provided so many fish for him. Simon couldn't believe what he was seeing. He immediately got on his knees. Simon knew he had made bad choices and had sinned. So he thought Jesus made a mistake and helped the wrong person. But Jesus told Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. Wait, wait, wait. Did you say fish for people? Like a people fisher with a pole and a hook? <laughs> what kind of food would you put on the hook? Ice cream! <laughs> <laughs> no, not that kind of fisherman. Jesus meant we could go out and help people know the love of God. Oh, that makes more sense. From that moment, Simon and his friends left everything to follow Jesus. They became known as Jesus' disciples. They went many places with Jesus and helped him to serve people and teach communities. Jesus called more people too. He had 12 disciples who were his closest followers and many more people followed and learned from him. They're lucky to live when Jesus lived. I wish I could be called by Jesus. God still calls us today. You could be a fisher of people. But what do we need to do? God calls us in different ways. He calls us to be his followers and share his message and love with others. How do you think he might be calling you? He could call me to share my snacks. There was a girl in my class who doesn't have anyone to play with during recess. God could be calling me to invite her to play. God could be calling me to invite the guys on my basketball team. The church on Sunday. I love all those ideas. I better start lunch. Oh, Liam, you can keep the hat. Really? Thanks. I hope it helps you to remember that Jesus called the disciples and God calls us.
Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So I will. Rain